Hey everyone, welcome back to Bucky's Customs. Hey, for a while now, I've been doing a lot of laser videos and I've been using my 48 inch extension on my MK1. Well, now I'm getting ready to use the MK2. We're gonna run a series of videos coming up here in 2023. But in this video, I'm gonna go through the wasteboard process, how I created it, why I created it, and we're gonna go start to finish and give you some tips along the way. So stay with us. Hey, once again, we're partnering with CNC Labs for another video. Go to their website, cnc.com, and check out this awesome machine called the Long Mill. I'll put links in the description below. Check out their store, check out their resources page. You'll be so happy you did. Now let's get back to this week's project. Okay, what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna set the machine up so that I'm at my extents. I put a V-bit in it, and what I wanna do is I wanna dig just a little bit of a groove across the X and up the left side of the Y in order to give me a 90, a perfect 90, to match the machine's coordinates. And that will enable me to align my T-Track and my wasteboard. Now we're going to take the first T-Track and we're going to line it on top of that Y-axis groove that I just created. And we're going to bring it down to the X. Then I'm going to use a centering bit from Montana Brand Tools. And I'll put a link to that in the description below. And uh, drill all the holes. And I use coarse thread screws to hold the T-Track down. Then we just, one right after the other, move the wasteboard in between the T-Track and fasten all of the T-Track down to the drawer that I have this MK2 on. And just keep going to the right, making sure that I line up with my X and my Y and all is good. Now I have the T-Tracks all mounted. I just need to pre-drill my waste boards. Now, I'm going to be doing a uh, bunch of, a series of holes in here for some plastic pipe. You know, just little pieces of plastic pipe to give me a fence. And I think I'm going to do similar to what I did my Ritter board. I'm just going to put a pattern in this and I'm going to use those as a positive right and left give me a 90 so that when I put my stock or my material in here I can uh, use my wedge uh, set up there my clamping set up with a wedge um, in order to hold it in place and I'm finding that you really don't need all that much pressure to do that but first things first we're going to uh, pre-drill our boards and you know our uh, waste board here and then we're gonna screw them down and I will uh, surface this portion of the mill now you notice I've, I've got a pretty small waste board in here and it's like that for two reasons Right now, I only need a small waste board, but I have plenty of room I can add to it and, you know, with another piece here if I need to. But um, I thought about 
I want to make sure that I can surface the whole thing and I think I'm able to do that with a small one like this and I think the majority of everything that I'm going to carve will fit on this. This is these T-tracks are 24 and it's 28 across. So I think that should be plenty big enough for what I want to do. If I need something larger, I can put it on the the MK1 with a 48 inch extension. And I did do a video on that on that uh install, so if you want to check that out, please do. Now we're going to take the waste boards and clamp them all together. I've already marked them all out and we're going to use a straight bit, drill a hole straight through. And then as you can see, I use my countersink and put countersinks for all the screws. Taking some sandpaper, cleaning off all the burrs and we'll get installing them. I'm doing the same thing here with the straight bit as a pilot so that um, it grabs the wood below and pulls the wasteboard down nice and tight. So now that all the boards are attached to my drawer, we're going to surface the top. And we're going to use the G Sender surfacing tool. If you don't know what that is, you can check out my YouTube channel here. And I do have a video on how to use it. It's a pretty cool tool. You might want to give it a shot. But we're going to flatten these boards and get it ready for the next step. Now my original G cinder surfacing uh, pass was not deep enough. You can see a little bit in the center and I needed to redo it. Well, somehow I redid it with a nice little half moon circle and I managed to stop it before it just started to take off. So. I decided, well, let's just hit home. Well, that didn't do me much good because when there's human error, this machine will only do what it's told to do. And you can see it went down and started running because I never changed the Z height. So just a tip for you, make sure that you check all your positions and make sure your X, Y, and Zs are where they need to be. Now you can see I moved on. We got this thing working. And I took a really, really deep pass. Maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so. And cleaned the board up for the final time. Well, that took care of the board, but um, unfortunately, I didn't stop the machine in time before it hit the screw. You can see it right there. <laughs> what a nut. But anyway, I not only messed up my waste board, I also dulled my surfacing bit. So live and learn on this one, folks. A little cleanup, and we'll get started on the holes for the PVC pipe. As you can see here, I have VCarve Pro open and I have the file already created. So I'd like to maybe just give you a little overview of how I created this, 
what prompted me to make the sizes that I did. And I'm going to leave this um, file in the description below so that you can go download it and do your own. I kind of had done this before, but I had used Carveco and I made a Ritter board, which is a board that you use to glue up projects. And I use it a lot for my cutting boards, but in this case, we're doing a waste board and it needed to be larger and of course a different size. So what I had done was, is I went ahead and I created my three boards. I purchased my T-Track, which that too will be left in the description below. So you can go to get that. I'll give you the link to that. But it was from there that I was able to start to create my VCAR profile. And how I did that was, is I just made a square right here of the same size as each wasteboard. Now, this particular line here on the outside depicts the length of the T-Tracks. Now, the T-Tracks are not on this board. I did take in consideration when I drilled all the installation holes for my wasteboard, I took in consideration where these holes were going to be so I wouldn't drill a hole right where one of these pockets was going to be for the PVC pipe. So I made sure that um, when I created these, I took a piece of the PVC pipe and I miked it and made these holes just a touch smaller so that there was some friction there and they would hold in place. But for the most part, it was pretty easy. I used a couple of the tools, like uh, the one tool that I used was the Array Copy tool. I will, um, in the future, I will probably do a couple more videos with VCarb Pro as far as just using VCarb Pro as a tutorial type of video. Uh, I won't make a project, I'll just show you how step by step from the beginning to end how I created the file. These are real easy to do, uh, very simple once you get the basics down. Like I say, I won't get into that in this video. There'll be upcoming videos with plenty of tutorials in them. Uh, this is just basically to give you an idea of how I got started and how I came up with the sizes that I did. The sizes of the wasteboard were basically how much can I surface with my MK2 so that I can catch all these boards. I don't want to leave any part of a wasteboard unsurfaced because it will cause imperfections in your carbs. So I made sure the size was small enough but yet large enough so that I could um, use it for 99% of my projects and that's how I came up with these sizes like I say the T-Tracks 24 the width on this is 28 it was a good program for one of the first that I used VCar Pro on to learn some of the basics of VCar Pro so all right let's uh Go over here and I want to show you the tool pass. And we're going to use the pocket tool path for the outside. I made them two different tool paths, as you can see. This particular tool path, if I click on, I used a quarter inch end mill. And the wasteboard material is three quarters of an inch. I did an offset because I you could see right here it just goes around and around and then takes six passes as you can see right here on this particular part six passes to do that I probably could have gone a little bit faster 
and less um, passes, you know, deeper carve. But I didn't really want to mess this hole up or do any fray or any of that because I wanted it to be a nice clean hole because we're going to put that PVC pipe in there and you want it to hold nice and tight. So I, I let this thing play out. It took quite a while for it to carve. I, um, as you can see coming up, I'll, um, I'll show you some of the carving, but it'll be sped up quite a bit. 20 25 times so what you're gonna see is is gonna be really quick but it it really took quite a while to do now the second one that I did was all the interior ones now you notice I drew more than what I did a tool path for and I realized that if I need to go back I can just redo this and put these holes in but for the most part, I felt I only needed every other row. I thought it was kind of overkill to go ahead and do too many in this case. So that's where I am on that. I used the same parameters and calculated that so that um, I had a tool path for it. And then I just put it in G Sender and send it to the MK2. Okay, so that about does it for the wasteboard. As you can see, I have added some PVC pipe in here, and I'm gonna get so I haven't figured out a proper technique yet as far as removing them, but uh, these needle nose pliers work well, and then I can use my mallet and put them in there. They stay right there. Um, what I uh, plan on doing is putting a board in there using these as stops and then just bringing over some others and using some wedges and uh, I've kind of put, put together a bunch of scraps. I've cut some wedges and I think that that will be all that is needed in order to fasten or uh, secure the uh, board on the mill and give me free reign of the top of the board that I'm, I'm cutting so that it... You know, I don't want it to interfere. I don't want it to interfere with the top of the board when I'm cutting an inlay or anything like that. So I've seen plenty of people do this. It does hold it in there really well. And it's my way of doing things. You might have a different idea. If you've got some tips or anything like that that you want to share, leave it in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to hear it, and if you have any questions about what I've done here, leave a comment in the comments below, and I'd be happy to answer. So, uh, if you like the video, click the like button, and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps us put content out. Ring the notification bell so that you can get notified when I post again. I really appreciate y'all. Thank you so much. Be safe out there.